We could only imagine the coordinated chaos that would take place if hundreds of thousands of people attempted to travel together to a specific destination, and then when they get to that destination, they were told to encamp together. So what would it look like? People wouldn't know where to go. They wouldn't know where to put their belongings. They would lose track of their friends, their relatives. The Torah in Parshas Bab Midbar gives a very specific guided recipe for the Jewish people to travel in the Midbar and to encamp in the Midbar. When it came to the encampment of the Jewish people, it was the Oel Moed that was in the middle. And the Levium circled around the Oel Moed to protect it, protect it from those who shouldn't be going near it, from the Jewish people who shouldn't be going near it. And the Levium were always charged to protect the Oel Moed. And thereafter, around the Oel Moed, on a wider scale, were the different Shvatim placed in specific places. And they also traveled in a very coordinated fashion. As the Pasuk says, Ish al diglo ve'osos, that people traveled based on the degel, based on the flag, which were the sign that was given to them, levesavosam, according to their father's home. In other words, each shebet, each tribe, had a flag that represented the tribe. Now, this flag, as we're told by Rashi, was based upon the Choshen, the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol, which contained within it 12 stones representing each tribe. And those stones were unique to each tribe. They were made of different colors. So if there was a Shevet that had a specific, let's say, a red stone, that Shevet would have a red flag. And all of the individuals whose father came from that specific tribe would know that they stay by their tribe, they stay by the flag, that represents their tribe, that's where they walk, that's how they travel, and that's also where they encamp. So the exact location as when B'nai Israel traveled, where each tribe stood, was actually based on the osos, based on the signs that Yaakov Avinu gave his sons when carrying his coffin back from Mitzrayim to bury him in the land of Israel. There Rashi explains that Yaakov was very specific where he wanted each son to stand. And that's the same way the Bnei Israel, the Jewish people, traveled in the Midbar, in the desert. Not a few individuals, not a couple of hundred individuals, but hundreds of thousands of people all gathered according to the flag of their tribe. So this idea of a flag and this idea of connection to one's past, connection to one's roots, is very significant in that each of us as individuals have our own flag as well. That just as the flag was unique to each tribe, to each Shevet, no two tribes had the same flag. We also have an internal flag that is unique to us. No two human beings, two people are exactly the same. No one like us as individuals have ever lived before. No one like us exactly will ever live after us. Our mindset needs to be that we are unique specimens, unique creations. And with our uniqueness as an individual comes a sense of specialness in that Hashem has a purpose for us to make a contribution to the world. And not just a general contribution, but a specific contribution that only we as individuals can actually do based upon the resources, the tools, the talents that Hashem has given us. And within this context, the Beis Aaron explains that we all have a part of the Torah that touches our neshama. That's part of our soul, connected to our soul, and we need to search for that Torah and be able to embrace it and be able to qualify that which we are as individuals based on what it is that we learn. I think it's very significant when we come to the Yom Tov of Shavuos, the day before the Shlosh Hashimah HaGbala is called the Yom HaMiyuchas. Yom HaMiyuchas is when the Bnei Yisrael, the Jewish people, would show their yichus, they would show their lineage, so that, they, that, that it would be known that these individuals are indeed Jews, these individuals are indeed worthy of receiving the Torah. And as we look at the uniqueness of us as individuals, we have to ask ourselves the question when accepting the Torah on Shavuos, what are we doing? What are we learning? 
to personalize our mission of learning Torah, embracing Torah, internalizing Torah, and living Torah. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu God created us and placed us in this world so that we should find our chilek of Torah. As we say in our davening on Shabbos, V'sein chelkeinu v'sara secha. We beg of Hashem, we ask Hashem to give us our chilek, our piece of Torah, the part, the piece of Torah that is made for us, for our neshama. May we be zocha, may we merit that on this Shavuos, as we connect back to the past, to the moment that our ancestors stood at Har Sinai and accepted the Torah, as we accept the Torah, we recognize that we have a personal connection and a personal investment in being able to acquire our own piece of Torah. And may Hashem give us the strength and the diligence to be able to do so successfully. Thank you for listening. Have a good Shabbos and a Chag Sameach.